So I've just got back to my flat after a quick trip up to Leicester because I was invited to go on a factory tour for a company that makes this sort of stuff. Not just one, but if you couple a few of these things together and you enclose them in some metal and you put some mechanical moving items in there, then you've got yourself a lens. And that's because I went to go and see Cook Optics to see how they make their beautiful lenses. So I was allowed to take my camera in on this tour. I got some shots, so I just wanted to share with you guys what it is that I saw. So if you ever shot with a Cook lens, at some point in its life, it will have come through this factory. We started the tour in the polishing room where the glass arrives from one of two suppliers. The glass comes in a rough state, isn't treated and is larger than what will be needed so the first step is to polish them up. This is one of the heads that they use to do the polishing along with the slurry. Cook have state of the art CNC machines to do this. But they also have the more traditional machines too. Both are still used as they excel in different areas. The traditional machines are sort of mesmerizing to watch, all catering to the different sizes of glass, some of which can even do multiple pieces on the one head. Some of this technology hasn't changed in years. Once polished, they are sprayed with a black peelable paint for protection until the next step, which is coating. We can go into the coating room as one, it's a clean room, and two, effectively, it's the room where Colonel Saunders keeps his fried chicken recipe. This is where the cut glass gets a lot of its characteristics. The lenses all get loaded into the metal tray that you can see on that table and can be coated in batch. We then went onto the edging room. First, a skilled technician shows us how they actually mount the lenses to the chuck so they can be put onto the machines. So they basically heat this chuck up and apply a wax-like substance. You can then mount the lens, making sure that the optical center is in the physical center of that chuck. You can see how strong that wax-like substance is. It can hold the weight of that chuck. But it's very straightforward to remove. With a couple of taps, it comes straight off through the vibration. Now that they're on the chucks, they can be put in the machines and can be edged to the exact sizing needed for the lens that they're going to be put in. If the glass is going to be mounted into a lens using a metal clamp, then they'll blacken the edges around that glass to avoid unwanted reflections. And this is done completely by hand. Next, it was onto quality control, where the technicians assess each individual piece of glass to make sure that it's up to the cook standard. And the tour finished in the assembly room. All of those elements are put together to create the inner of that lens to make sure that everything fits as it should. It's then completely deconstructed and both the metal and the glass elements are again cleaned before being reassembled in another clean room. Most of the lenses by Cook will be assembled by the one technician so they know exactly where each lens is in its production cycle. Now every lens can be ever so slightly different. You know, a 50mm can be a 49.9mm lens in the end. So the technicians measure the focus for the full throw of the lens so that the engraved markings can be exact. And what's interesting with Cook is that they don't make all these lenses in batch. They won't do, say, 20 50mm S4s in one go and then move on to another focal length. Instead, if you order a set, they will make that whole set to order all in the one go to ensure consistency throughout the different lenses. After the engraving, the paint on the lenses are done by hand. Once completed, they're all wrapped up and ready to be shipped, and then one lucky filmmaker can be capturing that cook look.